Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, we're gonna spend some time looking at the Power Platform Activity Logging in Microsoft Purview. And therefore, this video is very important for a large audience because I know the power users truly are interested in understanding the activity of their apps and flows, but also for the Power Platform admins because they wanna know where else can they get additional information even outside the Center of Excellence Toolkit. Same things goes for your security and compliance team. They are truly interested in understanding where all can we get all this data and if it's even being captured. And then finally, your managers, directors, executive teams, they are truly interested in understanding how all can we get data to govern the Power Platform. Therefore, it's very important for this wide audience. So stick around. But first, here's my intro video. So before we dive into Microsoft Purview, let me show you what you already have for Power Apps and Power Admin from a Power User perspective. And so here in Power Apps, I'm gonna go ahead and pick one of my Canvas apps. Again, as a Power User who actually built and monitors these Canvas apps, click on your app, click on the ellipses or the three dots in your details, click on it, and now you can go into the analytics section. In your analytics, you can actually go and take a look at the usage, performance, location, directly tied to that app only. So you've already got this for your apps. And if I switch gears and take a look at it from Power Automate, it's similar. Go ahead and click on the more commands button, go into your analytics section, and right over here, you've got similar features and functionality for actions, usage, and error. Over here, you can select the range for the last 30 days, all the way going up to just the last seven days. So for Power users already have this feature and functionality. I wanna switch gears now and take a look at it from the Power Platform admin standpoint. And a fantastic tool which I recommend every company should already have is the Power Platform Center of Excellence tool. This is something that Microsoft provides. All you have to do is go ahead and download the solution, configure it, and you're pretty much off to the races. It goes and starts grabbing all of this information. And here's basically just an example. So this is my personal tenant. And if I go and take a look at the overview dashboard, it's already capturing each and every things that I do over here. How many apps have been built? Who is your highest app maker? Same thing for the flows grabbing all of this information. It just does it step by step. And I can go ahead and deep dive into from a Power App standpoint, from a Flow standpoint. Um, I can even go down from a Users. Right away here in the Users, I can go and take a look at who are the makers. As you can see, I am one of the top makers. So if I click on my name, and if I go and click on the related dropdown, you can go ahead and look at it from each of these levels. How many apps the person has made, something, how many Flow is made. You can go and take a look at it at that level. But, but what if you want detailed information about each and every activity happening at the app level? Things such as how many times the app was open, how many times the app was closed, how many times the flow has been run, who is making all of those connections and where all this is happening, that is when your Microsoft Purview really shines because there it's connecting log at that level. So before I jump in, I wanna talk about what are the licenses that you need for that. So I'm looking over here in the Microsoft Learning document specifically for the Power Platform Administrative Logs in Microsoft, uh, specifically for the Microsoft Power Platform Administrative Logs in Microsoft Purview. Uh, an important item is mentioned over here saying that at least one user with an assigned Microsoft 365 E5 or greater license as required by Microsoft Purview. Now, this is true. However, there is a little bit of caveat to it. And the best way to understand that is let's go and take a look at our licensing information. So this is basically a Microsoft document that I have downloaded. And it does a side-by-side -side comparison of the E3s and E5s, E5 security and E5 compliance. Now, the reason I want to show you this is because I myself, for this specific tenant, I go ahead and use Microsoft 365 E3. And I am still able to leverage Microsoft Purview to grab all this information for my Microsoft Power Platform. And why is that working? Well, here's the reason. If we take a look right over here at the bottom, part of your E3 and E5, both of them contain e-discovery and auditing functionality. However, E3, again, the E3, which is way on the left side, it only allows audit standard. It's your E5 that goes ahead and allows the audit standard and premium. So you understand that both E3 and E5 provided, there is a big difference. 
But now your next question is, well, Daniel, what's the difference between standard and premium? So let's take a look at that. So we're switching back to the Microsoft Learning Document. Now I'll go and take a look at specifically the Microsoft Preview Auditing Solutions for both standard and premium. And the first thing I'm gonna look at is the audit standard. Now, if I scroll down a little bit, you will actually see this very important point is that only 180 day audit log retention. That's as much as what the standard will go through. It says in audit standard records are retained for 180 days. And if you didn't already catch it right over here in the important section, it says that the default retention period for audit standard has changed from 90 days to 180 days. It doubled, which is fantastic. Thank you, Microsoft, for doing that. Now, granted, this enhancement only happened after October 17th of 2023, but still such a huge improvement. So that's the big difference. Standard equals 180 days of additional logs. Premium goes higher than that. Well, how much higher? Let's find out. If I go ahead and scroll all the way down, I'm in the audit premium section, by the way, it's telling me right away here is that 180 days by default, or you can audit log retention policies for longer retention periods. But what I like is right over here, see the comparison of key capabilities? Side by side, it gives you a comparison of what the audit and premium can do. So we already know that in the audit, it can handle 180 days. But look at the premium. Premium can do 10 year audit retention. That's 20 times more than what this audit standard can do. So there is a huge improvement if you go and take a look at premium. So I do understand why Microsoft recommends an E5, but I just wanna clarify that you don't actually need it as long as you have an enterprise E3 and if 180 days is enough for you. So that's a key thing that I want you to be aware of because you might already have the E3 and you never even knew that this feature is available for you. So hopefully I've got you excited right now Let's go and take a look at what this purview has to offer. Now, if you've got all the correct roles assigned to you from an administrative standpoint, then when you go to Microsoft 365 Admin Center, if you go and click on the compliance, if you click on it, it takes you directly inside the Microsoft purview, right? So that Microsoft purview and where you want to go under the solutions is click on audit. That's what you want to do. Now, if you don't already see this, that just means that you don't have the correct permissions assigned. Uh, so just go and figure that piece out. But I do. So when I go to audit, I now come into my new search section. And over here, any second, you will see that I have already researched and done some searches already. I've done some auditing functionalities. And there you go. I've done four of them. It's good to see what the job status was. So you can see three of them completed successfully, which is 100%. One of them, I went ahead and canceled it in. When you're going and doing this audit, how much time does the search take? And then when based on the criteria that you gave, what were the total search results? I really like this one-stop shop location over here to see what you tried to do and in result, how much data that you got. Love this table over here. But it's important for you to understand that this auditing functionality is specific for Power Platform. What all information does he provide right now? And remember, this is all currently in preview, so more and more is to come. So as of right now, it is able to provide five different information about the Power Platform. And you always find out under the activities for friendly names. This is where you choose which activity or activities to search for. So the first thing I want to show you is from the Power Platform administrative standpoint. So if I go and click on this drop down, and if I just do a search over here for Power Platform, right off the bat, you can see Power Platform data loss prevention activities. See, so you can go and create that Power Platform lockbox activities. You can go and take a look at that Power Platform environment lifecycle operations when an environment was provisioned, when it was deleted, any hard deletion that happens, what was it moved to? Like this is the type of information that an Power Platform or PPAC admin would love to know. And right now the Center of Excellence Toolkit doesn't provide all of that. That's because you've got that feature and functionality available over here. Again, a reminder though, that the Microsoft Preview Standard only goes 180 days back. If you want up to 10 years, uh, then consider going up to the premium level. All right, just thought I'd remind you over there. Uh, but again, right over here from the administrative standpoint, you've got a lot of information right down to the Power Platform Analytics, Configuration and Operations. This is what I was talking about that the additional tools that the Power Platform admin needs to be aware of. Next is the Power Apps. And to do the Power app search, uh, go ahead and do a search for Power Apps. Uh, right now in the purview, it only comes in as one word. So if I've done that Power Apps, you can see now there's Power Apps 
app activities. And it goes down to this level of detail. Uh, created app, edited app, deleted app, launched app, marked as a hero. Like this is detailed granular level information that we just can't get completely out outside the center of excellence. So this is an additional tool in your tool belt. Same thing, all right? We do like Power Apps. Let's switch gears and take a look at Power Automate. And if I just do a Power Automate, right over here you can see Power Automate activities. Something similar like Power Apps, you were talking about the creation of the apps. Here it is talking about directly tied to the flow. Created flow, edited flow, deleted flow, um, any of the flow permissions were changed. Uh, you, can go and grab, you can go ahead and capture that. Power Automate hosted robotic process automation or RPA activities. It is even capturing at that level specifically for the machine groups. And I've done a whole separate video on the robotic process automation. I even converted the machine group. I'll put a link to that if you're interested about this. But Microsoft Purview goes ahead and gives you that logging detail for that as well. But wait, there's more. If I go and now do a search for the Power Platform as one word, uh, if I go up a little bit, you can see Power Platform connector events and this is pretty good from a for a governance reason as well because it's talking about api edited api created basically the crea creation of the connections and the connection references uh, it is giving you that level of governance i know security and compliance people will be thrilled by this and it will truly make the power platform admins day also much more easier because it's providing all of that um, in fact i was also interested to understand is that it provided the gateway cluster information pretty much about the gateways that you go and do that because let's face it gate Ways is another way to get on-premises data. So it makes sense that why the Power Platform Connector events also goes ahead and includes the gateway information. And then finally, which actually we also just looked at, it was in the Power Platform, and I did a search for Power Platform, we did see the DLP policies as well. That truly is a huge benefit for the administration standpoint as well, because now you can govern your administration team to say, hey, this new policy that was created, which went ahead and gave access to entire, say, connection or data sources, when was that policy created? Or if it was an update to an existing policy, when was that policy updated? You can capture that level of information as well. So this is just an overview of all the activities that you can go ahead and get the logs of using the audit functionality in Microsoft Preview. What I wanna do next is show you some examples. So what I wanna first show you is how do you go ahead and do an audit search specifically for Power Platform. So first, get an idea of what it is that you wanna search. And again, if you've only got the standard license, then make sure that you're inside the 180 days. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure that I stay inside that six months. So let me just go all the way to the start date as say the August 1st. Um, and I'll make sure that the end date, that actually stays inside that six months, all right? So I'll just go all the way to the end of November. I am for sure that this can, it takes care of that six months deal, the 180 days. After that, what is it that I wanna choose? So for that, in the activities and friendly name, um, go ahead and put in Power Apps, which is what I already typed in. And then now you wanna find out things about, say, the deleted apps. I know when the apps were created, edited, I wanna specifically find out about the delete apps. Uh, but if you want more information, basically just go ahead and click on these check boxes. And anytime you do that, it shows you all this information. But when it comes to creating the apps, editing apps, there's, I want to know what are those operation names? Like what were the actual operations running in the back end when any of these activities were going on? And so for that, you can come into the activity section, type in Power Apps, and then in your record types, if you go ahead and type in Power Apps over here as well, you can go and get to see if I want to just get the information about the Power Apps or pertaining which app was are pertaining, which plan was being used, or what were the resources being used, you can go ahead and select all of this as well. It really is beautiful at how granular you can go. And you can also go and put down which specific user you want. So in my case, I went and put in as Finn Christian. He's one of my employees. He's also my little dog, my puppy. Uh, but that's the basically the information. So you can grow. So just to make sure that you don't get way too much information, you can drill it down to a user level. And then, then you just basically go and click on search. Moment you click on search, it will first save your information. Well, actually, first of all, it will tell, hey, do you have the correct license authority for that? Because if you are just in the standard one, um, and if you go beyond 180 days, and it's gonna give you a message saying, hey, that is beyond your time frame. 
put it down inside the 180 days. Uh, but in our case, we went ahead and did everything correctly. Um, so what it's doing is now it's putting this in queue. It doesn't automatically run the auditing feature, just automatically takes off, it puts it in queue. And then afterwards it will start. It'll tell you how much percent is completed. And then once it's completed, it tells you the full search time that it ran and also the total number of results. So point being is when you're using this purviews auditing feature, factor in the time that it takes uh, because like I said, in this example, it pulled 14,000 items. Well, that took 11 minutes to run, right? So plan that accordingly. Um, so I'm not going to wait for this queue to complete. What I'm going to do is show you this example. So I've actually selected that. I'm opened up into a new tab. Um, and this was basically it. I went ahead and did something similar. I made it so that I specifically searched for me as a user. Remember, we did just from the fin. I did it just for my user. But I went ahead and did this Power Apps, Power Apps Plan, Power Apps Resources. And right over here, for that certain time span that we put the start and end date, it is capturing everything that Daniel Christian did, my user, right up to Power App. What at this specific date and time stamp, Daniel went ahead and launched an app and it gave me basically the app's ID name. With this information, you know we can go to the center of excellence and immediately pick up that information. So this itself is pretty neat. Uh, but if you go scrolling down, one interesting thing is Power Apps published app. See, we know we can get deleted app, we can get created app, but this published app is pretty important. Why? This is how we know that when Daniel went ahead and created a new app, if for some reason everybody else is not able to see all the enhancements that Daniel did in his app, well, that's because the published date, for example, its date and time did not match when the users came and completed because we can get information like this. If the user came and said, hey, I went ahead on December 1st and I don't see the enhancements, well, that's because the publishing was done the day after. So see how this auditing detail really helps you pin down and also police certain issues that come up. And if you want all this data, you can easily go ahead and export that and it'll give you an update. It says the export has started and the results will be available to download. Once it's available, a little notification comes out and you can go ahead and download that into a CSV or an Excel spreadsheet. But isn't this awesome? You've got direct access to all this data and in this demo, I am just scratching the surface over here because I remember I told you those were five different things that you can do from the DLP level, basically the administrative standpoint, uh, right up to Power Apps and in the Power Automate. And remember, this is all currently in preview. So I'm really hoping it will expand and we should even start seeing some future stuff about Power Pages. Now, I cannot leave without showing at least one thing because I know what some of you are thinking. Says, Daniel, what does it already show me about Copilot? Well, let's do a search over here, right? So on the choose activities, um, if I come down and if I do a search for say Copilot, uh, let's see what all we find out. So in the Copilot, if I do a search, right now for Copilot activities, it's giving only this one activity which is interacted with Copilot. So if I go and select that Copilot, and if I go into the records type, um, if I change my Power Apps and do a search for Copilot, uh, let's see what we find. Same thing, Copilot interaction. So Hopefully more and more information will come out for Copilot in the future. I'm pretty sure this leverages Microsoft Graph in the back end. So some plumbing is required, but all in all, I'm really excited about this functionality because it really gives me the extra tools that I need to govern my Power Platform to the next level. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment Either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.